Why, hello everybody! My name is Fretex and welcome back to Manor Lords. Guys, today we have a simple mission. We are going to defeat the Baron today. That's going to be my general plan. I'm currently waiting a little bit though, so it's going to be a bit late in the video. Mostly because we are currently converting our armed forces over to Super Chainmail Men. After that, we're going to go and attack the last three territories and finish them off for good. I feel like having an army of completely equipped units will be vastly better than whatever he has anyway. So I'm looking forward to it. We are looking pretty good right now when it comes to approval. We're getting towards 100%. There's actually a full-on achievement to get a large town and have 100% approval. I want to get that for the video because I'm recording my desktop, by the way. So if that happens, you'll get a little pop-up saying, Ah, oh, you've done it, sir. You're a genius. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, so for the, in that vein, for now, I'm actually going to turn off taxation. Because we've got to wait a little bit anyway to get the armor set up. So without taxation, we should lose one of the last bits of negative approval we get. And hopefully we can get to a point of 100% approval. After that, I don't really care about approval that much because it should be fine. Though, of course, you want to keep it above 75% because if we're going to get a thousand population, we're going to need a lot of people. Also, we did set up the beautiful charcoal kiln. Wait, why are you guys not doing any work? What is wrong with you? Oh, I think they're just waiting for the things to cook. Okay, fair enough. I'll let them off. So I do want to probably fill in all these jobs. So that we have ourselves maximum charcoal production. And if you look at this, we already are pretty sorted with that kind of stuff. We have a thousand food and storage and nearly 700 firewood. Mm, some may say that I've kind of defeated the issue with anything at this point. Oh, wait a second. Is this thing still bugged? Just connect the building to the King's Road. Yeah, I, I have game. I have. Let's delete this building again. I was trying to build this uh, in the last episode. I want to get more traders going, but it does seem to be having a bit of a hiccup. Delete. Okay, let's make another trader. Actually on the King's Road. At that point, the game can't tell me their lies. It has to accept what I want it to do. I'm, I'm failing. Give me a second. There you go. Make it right here. I will get myself what I need. The game will not stop me. Another kind of side project I want to do, by the way. I want to make my mana bigger. So currently it's on a hill. I want it to be like the entire hill if I can. So in that vein, I'm actually going to consider, because I, I thought I could part build this. It doesn't really work that way. Because every time I rebuild it, it has to then go and re-put all the materials back in for some reason. It's a bit weird. I need to get myself an absolute metric ton of logs to do this. And unfortunately, you can only have so many logs per logging camp. So I'm actually going to expand this out a little bit. But first, let's do a few tweaks, shall we? I'm going to build myself some additional foresters. So I have one here and one here. And then I'm going to put down myself one, two, three, four logging caps. This will massively increase the amount of capacity I can have with logs. And hopefully if the planks don't get too overburdened with their production, we can get ourselves a really, really big manor house. And also towards this, we're going to increase this to 500. It's going to be glorious. The only thing we're going to be missing is stone. I think we need stone to build mana buildings. So we're just going to put this at 200 as well. Stone's okay to import. It costs literally a single coin. So I'm not really that bothered about that. It should be fine. Uh, cool. That's looking pretty good. I think I'm more interested in probably filling out the logging camp stuff first. And then we we'll go back and we we'll do the charcoal stuff. Mostly because they seem pretty slow at the job anyway. Uh, oh, also, am I missing any important jobs here? Not really. Let's remove the logging camp job so there's only one per area. And then we'll cap out the bit at the top here. I still can't seem to get the oxen to actually live inside the stables most of the time. They kind of just do their own thing and just don't do it. <laughs> it's okay, don't worry about it. Ah, look at all this. Okay, maximum foresters. And then we want one person per logging camp. And this should mean we have ourselves an extremely large amount of logging storage. 28 times 6. People that are smarter than me can probably already figure that out. Me? No. I'm not going to worry about it. Storage is full. No, don't do this to me. Oh, that's the... That's this stuff. The apples. I have noticed they don't seem to collect apples very well for some reason. Out of all the things, they seem to just leave apples alone. But they do do it a little bit. I think it's just the actual granary staff that pick it up. But the villagers don't seem to drop it off in the village markets for some reason very well. But don't worry about it. I'm sure it's fine. Oh, guys, look. Our first farmers are moving into our new village farm field. Check it out. 
It's going to be beautiful eventually when they get them all set up and ready for the uh, harvesting season. It's going to look great having all these fields actually with beautiful green specks on them. We're actually getting quite close as well to getting enough living space. So at that point, I'm going to make a little sub-community down this way. And we're going to have a super berry production facility over here. Right now, it's very inefficient because people are just too far away. But we'll make it work, don't worry. I'm also super considering deleting this marketplace and making it smaller. Mostly because there's, it's going to take eons to get this filled up. And I want to have another market square over here to have the next extension. So we've got to try and balance things out a little bit. I do wish they do change the market source system myself. In fact, if I do this right now, this is going to cause a problem. Oh no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, look at all that stuff in the middle of the map there. We can have two half market. So what I'll do, I'll put another market down right away. Because it was already half full, right? So if we just have one that is going like so... Oh, I think it's trying to loop around this supply. We're waiting for it to get it removed. With the amount of logistics we have in the game, there shouldn't be that long to remove all this. At least I hope so. I'm not really keen about having this load of food on the floor, though. I wouldn't want to have that myself. Look at that guy go with the bread making. That guy was a badass. What even be? More families are joining us. Excellent. Okay, how's it going over here, guys? A lot more trees are appearing. And hopefully we'll see more stuff in storage soon. Yeah, if also, I think... I don't know if it is the correct rate. There probably are ratios I haven't really bothered looking into. But I guess... I think it seems like you have, like, one forester. Is probably equivalent to, like, one logger and one fire collector. Fiber collector. Am I wrong there? I don't know. I'm not going to bother working it out. Because, honestly, it's fine as it is. I'm not that doing... I'm not making super efficient villages. I'm just making stuff like this. This is not a <laughs> giant grid, which probably people were doing already. This is more just a nice flowing village, which I think looks pretty pretty. Ooh. Yes. More workers for the worker gods. Improve their lot in life. As well, what we'll do, once we actually finish building the little berry production facility, I'm actually going to put down myself probably upgrades everywhere so have all these orchards and farms be level three so they hold more population cool it's finished i'm gonna buy a do i buy a horse last time i think i did trading post advance yes i did okay buy a horse again i'm poor never mind <laughs> sir you can't do that please merchants there's something i'm not sure about with merchants right do they just go to the nearest possible location Wow. Um, so you really only want one trading post in the game then? Is that what I'm understanding right now? Because currently it looks like only one of them works. Which means this one's got loads of goods in it. But no one's ever going to bother coming over here to collect them. Is that working as intended? I'm not sure I'd like that to be honest. Hmm. Okay well. What do we do? I feel like, at least with this limitation being discovered, we should go back to having a single trade post. Because otherwise we're going to be wasting time here. I mean, what, there's nothing I can do in the game to stop them from splitting up the resources, really. So we'll delete that, and we'll go back to one. And hopefully that should fix our income, because it's gone down dramatically. Oh, I've done it! Approval! Did you guys see an achievement? Wait a minute. So I got an achievement for getting 100% approval, by the way. And also, I got an achievement for King the Baron, but I haven't done that yet. So, I'm not sure <laughs> what's going on there. All I do know is that apparently I've done the achievement. So, we can go put this back on. Land tax. New mercenaries are available. Ooh. Let's have a quick look, shall we? It's the Wayward Sons again. So, with that in mind, how are we doing with the economy when it comes to armor and stuff? 17, 12, 6. We're looking pretty good, but it's not capped it out yet. We'll leave them be for a bit longer. We've not even got 10 minutes into the video, to be honest. So I'm being a bit premature there. Cool. So that should be fixed soon. Have we got to the point where I can put the market bit down? Yes, I have. Okay. Let's do a half market. Which apparently I'm struggling with. No game. I just want a little market. 35 would be fine, right? Let's put one here. And as there's no more market splots 
in the game, they should all run over here and quickly refill what they were doing before. Yep, perfect. Once it's full, we're going to start the next production phase of our village. How many? So I'm, just ama I'm amazed by the weird graphic changes when you're putting markets down. <laughs> I guess the pathfinding is very complicated in this game, so it makes sense in a way, because they got to change everyone's pathing to every location. It's probably pretty intensive. I, I can't imagine what it's going to be like when you have like a crazy big network of towns. They have like five or six towns, all with like thousands of people in them. It's going to be absolutely crazy. Anyway, it's looking pretty good though. We are nearly at capped out markets, which is good to see. Also, got us a spare worker, so we're going to increase the charcoal more. Nice. And we've got one more to fill in afterwards. Are you guys done? Three location zero. Perfect. So at this point, we're going to go and put some other stuff down elsewhere. Uh, let's go have a look. So I'm going to make this into a little sub community over here where the berries are. So we currently have a forager, right? With no workers. Okay. So I'm going to put myself down a little road for a marketplace. The thing I'm a bit concerned about is are there more markets that need to be put down by our community? I guess we could put down some additional smaller markets until we fill it all in. Uh, let's do this. Oh, I think they're connecting that bit. Ten locations. Let's put this down as well and we'll see if they fill in. So I want the markets to be efficient. I want everyone over here to have markets here. Simple as that. Then the new community will just have its own amount of markets, exactly how much it needs, and then we can move on to making a very big village square somewhere else. It's a bit finicky getting all this sorted out. Two, seven quiet. Now some more people are showing up. We'll let them be for a little bit there. More families. Maximum charcoaling. This doesn't seem like a very efficient population thing, does it? I feel like I'm wasting resources having free workers on each of these. Because they're all clearly working, aren't they? Hmm. Curious. Oh, no! <laughs> that wasn't the plan. We might have to mark manage just a little bit. I don't want stalls across the map for everyone else. Delete that. It's okay, I can micromanage this to victory. It's not a problem. So we need two stall locations. Oh. No, what about here? Aha! <laughs> the lengths I take to get a perfect area. Uh oh. Where are they? Oh, look at they're right next to us. Let's deploy the forces. Assemble the men! Don't run though. Oh, it's too late. <laughs> One second of running. Zero stamina. Okay, enemies are spotted over there. What we're going to do, let's do the basic formation. Uh, bada bing. Get ready. Okay, good. Perfect. How many chainmail units have we got? Hmm. I'm not seeing enough chainmail here. They're definitely not close enough. Here comes the enemy though. they've gained charge damage. Is that from the impact of the armor? Interesting. So we're letting them commit first, then they'll flank around. So they're going there. What the hell? They, they wrecked them. <laughs> they, what? I, I'm so confused. They absolutely wrecked them. That was probably one of the quickest retreats I've seen so far. These guys are wrecked as well. Okay, there was a, not a very successful banner raid from their part. They got absolutely destroyed. We'll do a quick flank anyway. I'm not sure they can get in position in time, but we'll give it a shot. Close range, fire at will. You guys re-set yourselves up. Ah, they're not classed as being in range. Or oh, sorry, in visual range. I would never consider doing the friendly fire mode. <laughs> I think it's going to kill everybody. Here they come. Okay, they're definitely firing now. Good job, guys. You can go back to work. No. <laughs> How are they not surrendering right now? 
No, Steve! He's dead. Oh, we let them out afterwards. That's nice. I wouldn't do that if I was in charge. Now back to work. Okay, so back over this way. Has the mini market been filled up? Yes. So if we go back to our main market, let's have a quick look at it. It has nothing right now. Let's put down an additional... Let's put down the marketplace. 32, too much. 18 is good, I think. 15. Ooh, that's probably better, actually. So flat. Okay, we'll see if someone comes over here at this point. Oh, are you okay, game? Yep, yeah, it's fine. So, in theory, this is all set up now. We have ourselves a tannery, woodcutter's lodge, storage house, granary, and we're going to build the second forager. So, we're missing the houses next to get people to work over here. I want to make sure, before I put any houses down, we assign the rest of the jobs to people so that they actually are working in the main town. I guess we can try and go for some additional... What do we want to pick up? Maybe just max out the taverns or something? Oh, we can make more goat hides over here. No, that would, that would increase the amount of markets again. <laughs> no. Let's double up plank production. Let's see if that makes it any more efficient. So one. Two. Three. Four. Perfect. And at this point, we've got too many houses. Uh, we haven't got enough houses anymore. So let's go over here and we'll put down some housing as well. Okay, so how do I want to do this? It's a very weird rural community. I guess they wouldn't have the same structure as other places. So we have like a bit of a offshoot kind of roady kind of thing. And we have a few like single lesser houses. Okay, everybody. So at this point, I'm watching this video back editing right now. And I kind of realized at the end of the video I was recording here that I wanted to change what I was doing. So originally when I was doing all these things, this little hunting community, I've really wanted to get a small community where everyone's working independently then i wanted to get a bigger community somewhere else to try and get to a thousand population i of course later on decided not to do that because it was going to just be trying to drag out the game too much i don't know why i even want to try and do it in the first place a lot of the mechanics right now well i say a lot of them mostly the market mechanics marketplace mechanics are very honestly frustrating to get them to work how you want them to work because for instance you have like marketplaces with the stall slots they fill them in one by one based on where you put them down. So if I had a guy with firewood on the top of the map and I had a market stall to the south of the map, the guy would put one there and then spend the rest of the game just moving goods one at a time across the map. It was very frustrating unless I want to particularly go back and redo all of my marketplaces each time and make sure every job is assigned to the correct one. It was a nightmare for logistics. So with all that in mind, I'm going to cut a lot of this, that bit of content out. And we're going to focus on the bit where I'm just going against the Baron, which is actually more coherent and me just fighting a war, which I think makes more sense. This will make this, uh, this episode shorter, so I do apologize. But at the end of the day, guys, I'd rather have that than have a video which is just me working on stuff that doesn't make any sense in the long run if I'm ending this as a final episode anyway. Hope that makes more sense, people, and we're going to carry on with the video. Uh, the mercenaries are too slow, but it looks like the enemy's forces have arrived. He seems to be using the same units as last time, which is a bit disappointing because we absolutely trounced them last time. Okay, everyone set up. Yeah, light mercenaries. He, he's actually outclassed by my regular Misha at this point. They're going for two flanking attacks, which is quite interesting. I say we don't waste any time because he's already got his units out by themselves they're already miles away and easy to pick off i say we get these guys to charge right away we switch if we can over the retinue to fight the other retinue and we have these guys run off to attack the enemy main formation we send off the spearmen to slowly walk towards and then engage the enemy flankers over there with the brigands and i think my mercenaries are a bit too slow they're going to miss the battle completely can you guys run I don't think it matters too much about stamina when it comes to archers, but we'll have to see. Okay, you guys, engage forward. They should catch them before they touch the militia. Yeah. Battle side. Okay, perfect. I guess we're going for a large club warfare this time instead of having an actual battle line. Okay, can you guys run around the flank and get around the back of them? My polearm guys are just chasing them. <laughs> run away! They're chasing us! Oh, they actually got him. Okay, that's that dealt with. I honestly think it's better just to have the archers go around the flank. Because they do so much damage. 
Can you guys run off and help over kill the brigands over there? I mean, damage-wise, we have the advantage. Army power 21. We are winning that engagement. You guys, close combat mode. Go around behind and start shooting them in the back. And I think we should be good. Oops, save again. Yep. No, 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 no. You get this problem in Total War as well. I would just give them shift commands, but that's not currently a feature in the game. Okay. Yeah, actually, that actually went out. Perfect. Oh, the rest of you are losing members. They lost members in plate mail? They have 82 armor value. <laughs> I'm surprised. Okay, guys, start firing the back. Okay, they retreated. Good to see. We have to quickly run them back and get another member of our family. Hopefully Patrick didn't die. They're retreating. Last one. We lost 18 people now? Curious. Armor doesn't seem to be as powerful as I thought it was. Because that should have been an okay battle. We had the advantage. We have better plate mail. We still lost six warriors though. Very curious. Next time we try not to have the red seal on the front line. It seems they're a bit squidgy. Especially for their armor value. Uh, wait a second. What is happening over here? The archers defeated the polearm units. What? Well, okay. Um, <laughs> not sure I was expecting that. That's a bit crazy. So pole arms are a bit squidgy as well when it comes to fighting. We won. Victory. Attack zero. How do you guys defeat a fully armed pole arm regiment? That's what I want to know. Okay, let's get rid of all these. Everyone go back to base. We have to probably get some recovery now because we lost some units all over the place. Everyone get back. I will probably just keep these retinue hired because it costs me 45 coins every month. But we'll go back and attack quite soon. I'm going to probably get rid of these subpar pole arms. Let's go for just more militia footmen. It won't let me put more units down. Is that? Ah, oh, that's annoying. Okay, let me get rid of these. Delete these units. Get rid of these. There you go. That's my army. <laughs> these guys seem to be the most adaptable. They're quick. They got shields. They do more damage. I feel like it's probably the best way. Especially if the... I was originally considering having like two flanking forces of pole arms. But if pole arms cannot defeat a unit of archers, I don't think I want them in my, my army. Sorry. Okay, let's go back to this and we'll quickly get some new units. Upgrade. Look, I remember I still actually have a selection of armors in storage. So we can quickly quick upgrade them all to the higher tier. Sorted. Though we do seem to be... Oh wait, we've already got pretty much maxed out everything. My god, that was quick. Okay, everyone, get back into combat formation then. And there's no mercenaries to worry about hiring. Okay, next place. Let's go over this way. Head over here, friends. And I'll leave them a little bit while they're doing their jobs. So, what's going on with the economy? We got ourselves some workers. Good to see. I Planks are now 66. We've defeated the plank issue. Excellent. Does that mean I can now go back to upgrading my houses? We can upgrade a few, but not all of them. Ah, perfect. These ones are upgradable. Definitely do the farming ones first. That makes more sense to me. And this would increase the general amount of workers we have everywhere. Remember as well, because they're tier two, because they're level two housing with two family slots, they turn into four slots. So this is very, very efficient for actually increasing our entire population capacity here. New mercenaries available. Who we got this time? Same guys again. I wonder if you kill mercenaries, does that kill them off permanently? Because I, I, I seem to only be able to hire one type at this point. Okay, we'll hire them anyway. Okay, they're on their way. 
this time we're trying to do both battles in a row. I don't know if the last battle is going to be more powerful. We'll have to see how it works in the end. Wow, my thing's gone down dramatically. Taxation, negative 22. What the hell? I guess I have got 5% taxation. That's probably a bit overkill. Let's go over 2% again. I guess so. Once we defeat the Baron, we haven't got to worry about taxation at all because I've already done the military part of the game. Where are these archers? I don't know. Okay, while we're waiting, I'm actually going to put two full-time ox workers on some of these fellas here, just so they work all the time. I might also give them two additional workers if they've got a bespoke oxen, but we'll see how that works out in the long run. As for the actual battle, let's start another claim, shall we? I claim whatever this place is. What is your answer, Baron? I fart in your general direction, sir. Have at ye. Okay, sporting units over there. Uh, let's grab my friends. So the battle's going to be over there. He's coming from the north. We'll put the units like so. Sword. That can't be it, though, surely. There must be more. So he's got two light infantry again. The archer. Okay, he's just spawning the same enemies every time. Interesting. <laughs> Where am I? The battle begins. So they're going for the retinue for sure. I'm going to do a what we do. Okay, the battle's about to begin. They're going to go for the same kind of tactic as before, but this time we got a lot more adaptability when it comes to our units, because we're faster, and we generally are just the same fighting value, so it's a good increase there. As they come in, they're going to go for the retinue, by the looks of it, so we're actually going to try and move up some units to flank. Uh, this guy here... I'm not wasting any time here. We are going to... Perfect. Bring these guys back a little bit. They're going to flank around and distract the brigands. We're going to move up all these units, archer-wise, along the flank, and they're going to shoot through the back with all their firepower. Uh, the last archer, I'm going to use this to go around the other left flank and do exactly the same thing. So we want to make sure we distract this guy here, start charging. You two, run. I want one of you here. I want the other one nearby. Okay, this battle's about to begin. Keep running through. Okay, that should be the end of the retinue. Militia's holding. Retinue's holding. Oh, wait. You guys aren't meant to be there. Do what I told you to do. Go over there. Okay, start firing point blank. Same for you guys. And that should be that finished off. Guys. Guys. you got to pull back. Okay, they're not doing it. Don't worry about it. Stop retreating. Oh, look at this. I love this strategy. It's so good. Personally, if I was in this battle, I would just turn around and start attacking the archers right behind me. But then again, I'm a weird man. What can I say? Oh, their morale is doomed. Dead, dead. Both of them are gone. Okay, we still got a problem with the archers over there. All units charge. Get rid of close combat mode, shoot at will, volley fire. And this is handled. Hmm, maybe it's just the archers are really good at doing skirmish warfare. Let they've been broken. Excellent work. So we lost at most three or four people. Not really anything that dangerous. 
We'll bring the forces forward here. We'll let them rest for a little bit, especially the retinue. And then we're going to take out the Baron very shortly. So, you know, I kind of want to kill the Baron this episode, but I've already been playing for around an hour. So, we're going to quickly just rush through the final attack now. We still have all the units. It should be fine. I mean, only the retinue has extremely slow stamina regen. Everyone else is pretty much good to go already. <gasps> is this a bigger army? Oh, my God. He's actually got a bigger army. How big is it going to be? Okay, so it's increased by quite a bit, but nothing too crazy. He now has himself two additional spearmen and one additional archer squad there. Can we get mercenaries? No, we cannot. So this is our forces for this battle. Everyone move up. We must defeat the Baron and save the world. It's kind of a shame there's so many forests. <laughs> Do you know what? I reckon he's going to focus on the right-hand flank. But the battle has apparently begun. Stamina-wise, we should be okay by the time they show up. Are they... Oh my god, what are they doing? Are they serious? Are they charging with the retinue, but not the rest of the army? <gasps> they have plate mail now. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so this is definitely the harder battle than the last one we just did. But they've made a grave mistake of going in by themselves. So we're going to do a complete and utter charge on them in a second. And he's going around that flank. Definitely want to do retinue versus retinue. Where are they going? Okay, we're not going to waste any time. We're moving in now. Everyone, move up. You guys come around the back and do any... I'll get these guys to be a defense group. So we'll surround the retinue of our strong forces. We'll wipe them out first. Then after that, we will push forward and take down the rest of their forces. The archers are probably the biggest risk here. I might use my guys to counter them specifically. Hold! Okay, surround, charge. Okay, that's surrounded. Perfect. Whoa, oh my god, they're just shooting one guy at a time. So in terms of damage power balance, we have the advantage here, despite them having more numbers than us. So we'll leave that be. So the problem is going to be, we're now going to have guys coming in from every direction, which is going to be a bit dangerous, to be honest. I, if they are shooting, are they still shooting in now? Interesting. For some reason, I can shoot directly sideways into their formation. I think it's because we can see one guy. Their 29% effectiveness. We should be able to get that sorted out. So, rest of the battle, we're going to have one unit guard here. And have a unit here. We want to make sure my guys do not get sandwiched in. It seems they're going on a flank completely though, which is not good to see. I need to try and take advantage of... Where are they going? Can we charge through this location? Yeah, it looks like we can. Keep them away from the retinue. Which is about to break. Guys, when I said to move this way, I meant come this way. Are they running away? I'm not sure what they're doing. Okay, start charging. Kill that group first. Four versus one should be quite quick. Unfortunately, we are dealing with archers being shrouded over there, which is not good to see. Uh, what we can do, though, when the battle begins, we just have them set up nearby, and they can shoot into the enemy. Okay, next group, we have the archers moving on the flank. So we're going to keep what we're doing, because in a second, these guys should break. They're at 1% efficiency. We are being shot from the sides, though. Go that way. You guys come over this way and help kill the archers. Ah, they're not breaking as fast as I want them to. I think it's because they got reinforcements, unfortunately. We are still looking pretty good, though. I think we should win this still. Okay, they're shooting in there. These guys should get wiped out soon. I'm going to run these guys. To re oh, they're retreating. Fair enough. Okay, in that case, come around the back and shoot these enemies in the back. That goes for both of you. 
They're not using their additional archer squad over there, so we've got some time here. Excellent work. Go over here. Oh, no! Oh, wait. What? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I thought the game was going to tell me we're being attacked by bandits right now. That would have been bad timing. Okay, so we've got a situation where we've got four versus two, and we've got two archer squads shooting from the sides, which is looking brilliant. We still do have two flanking archer forces, but we're going to ignore them. One enemy left. Keep firing. Oh, they have no chance here. This is a complete victory for us. So at this point, the enemy arch infantry is dead. We're going to use our archers to bulk fire at the enemy. And we're just going to try and wear them out that way. The other units, I'm not really sure there's much point using them. Because they can't really seem to chase down archers that well. So we just use our superior firepower to win here. Enemy broken. Next one. Dead. So... Oh. That's not my village game. That's a... What is happening? We've done it. Days pass. 3,910. My God. Challengers won. Enemies killed. Soldiers lost. That's a pretty good kill ratio. 1,205 kills and 91 losses. That's pretty crazy. So everybody, at this point, we have firmly defeated the Baron and Man Lords. And I feel like this is going to probably be it for the series. I don't really see the point in dragging things out. I've already won. Though I will quickly say some thoughts about the game if people are interested in this episode here. So, of course... I've loved playing this. What, are we in seven hours into this playthrough? Now, I must admit, I do play pretty fast because I do tend to like to put the old times 12 speed on. But in terms of early access, I've absolutely loved this. I was given the key, what, a week ago, and I put 40 hours into it. Of course, I've only recorded seven hours rip for my YouTube channel, but the single player games, I had like giant farmlands, that kind of thing. And also, I have my multiple cities to this size. Originally, I did say in the series I wanted to try and get to the point where I had a thousand villagers and a big manor. Thinking about it in reflection, that's kind of just dragging things out, isn't it? Really. I mean, it would be cool to see how the game handles a thousand population. But if it how it's currently set up, I would rather wait until the game's actually designed to get that high. Because currently, we got to 400 population. Congratulations. You're a large town. Maximum settlement level reached. I would rather wait until the game is actually developed enough to get to the massive size population centers. Of course, there's stuff in the game we can't even use yet. You can go and get tooling and stuff. You can't use tools. It will be used for something at some point. What if I make a thousand village now, and then a month down the line there's a new patch and they have cathedrals or like an entire new tech level for the game? I don't know what the plans are, but I feel like doing it now with the current mechanics, I've already would be a shame, a disservice to the game itself. It deserves to be played properly when it is available to do a big ass city, and then we will do it then. Same thing for the manor. Originally, I was saying I was going to go and make a big manor. I did start making one out, but unfortunately, with how the system works with buildings, I actually can't delete some of these items. They're just not deletable. So it would be a bit weird. I was going to try and do one that's kind of like a giant circle on the hill, but same for thought process. What if I spend ages making a giant manor, saving up 180 logs or probably more to make it? And then we find like a month down the line they unlock like stone walls or like keeps for your manor. It would just be a disservice. I would rather wait until the game is ready for me to build a giant fortress of doom. Kind of like the ones you see in some of the loading screens when you play the game eventually. Um, you will see that there's some really cool looking manor towns of like a wooden wall at the outskirt of like big stone walls and like a big keep. It looks really cool. I cannot wait until I get to build one of those in game with my own designs. It's going to be amazing. I, I really can't wait. So that's my reasons there for kind of stopping the series here. Because I feel like we've done the game. Of course, difficulty-wise, 
the very early part of the game, difficult. I love difficulty in video games. If a game's too easy, like a lot of ones I play in the past, I tend to not be that interested in playing them, to be honest. I'm not going to turn otherwise. I mean, some game, a game it comes with B, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm probably, I play it quite often on my channel, though. It's just too easy, guys. There's no challenge in it at all. There's, it's, there's no reason to go back to it until it gets better. Now, the best thing about this game, Mountain Lords, is that it's early access. Their things will probably change. Of course, I'm saying about difficulty. I did find after the first year or two of this game, it was too easy. And I am on the higher settings. Don't, don't discount that. The only thing that I'm not on maximum settings for was I put the Ray Timer on two years instead of one year, because that was the default for it. Apart from that, it's the same. After you get past those two years with the bandits, you've done it. You finished it in terms of uh, being killed in the game. You have a successful village. Bandits can't kill you and the Baron will not attack you. It's easy at that point. You've done it. So in terms of early access, I do feel like I'm a bit concerned about the difficulty of it. Though I would take all this as a massive grain of salt, of course. Because what I've just said is based off the current build of the game. We know from the main menu that they are planning on adding AI that actually builds stuff in the campaign map. Oh, sorry, not campaign. The actual game world. What happens when you have a Baron that owns six territories and he's building all of them simultaneously as an AI? He's going to be better than me, isn't he? I can't keep up with that. I'm a, I'm a terrible human. I can barely tie my shoelaces when I go outside. An AI making six villages at the same time will probably be able to defeat me in hard mode if I'm building a single village. That's my hope in the future. I hope that when they develop this game fully, they add a nice new tech tree to get to like more advanced city building. And that it actually goes up to larger tiers. We can get like big wonders like cathedrals, that kind of thing. I also hope that the game is set up to be difficult. I would love it if there is multiple AIs on the map. I would love it if they have more and more advanced armor or army sizes. And have the ability to fight me man to man and try and wipe me off the map. I want to struggle to win my video games. I do not want to be sat here watching my income come in, my population go up. I want to risk or fear being wiped off the game completely on the harder settings. Harder setting, guys. I'm in a minority here, okay? Most of you will be happy just building a village. I want to die. <laughs> the more, the closer I am to death, the more I enjoy playing a video game. That's my general sense of video gaming. I know I'm weird, but it's just what I'm like. So yeah, that's just some general thoughts on the game I had. I will say a lot of it is placeholder, so I'm not going to say too much about the general specifics of the game. Like, I do think there are some issues of logistics. Um, and some of the battle mechanics are a bit iffy sometimes, but like I said, I'm going to view all of that as placeholder, so I'm not going to say anything about it really at this point, because it doesn't really matter. It will be changed at some point. It's all just getting the game to a state where people can play the game and make beautiful looking villages like I feel like I have, honestly. I'm not a very creative person, but I actually love this village. I just love the orchard field in the middle here with our beautiful townhouses. We have an amazing little hillside vegetable farm it's a shame that i didn't get any fertility because it'd be nice to put some farms out as well but i like how this turned out even someone like me can create something that actually looks semi-decent in the minds of myself of course there's people out there who probably made cities that look vastly better than mine without even a candle to what i've created here but i honestly think it's nearly impossible to make a bad looking city man lords unless you decide to go anno and just put grid based buildings then it will look terrible but even if you do a little bit of randomization like with these fields and pro properties it looks great it really does but with all that out of the way guys i think it's safe to say that i do like this game i really love it the guy that created this is an absolute genius i feel like he has made something to be proud of if I don't know if you're ever watching this, but you have made a great game by yourself. This is an amazing quality game combining city building and war aspects that no one's even bothered trying before. It is brilliant. It really is. I look forward to seeing your roadmap and where you're going to increase it in the future. And I cannot wait to play it again when it has some more content down the line. If you are not like me, which is probably nearly all of you, and you want to have a game where you can just make giant villages and not have to worry about any of the bandits, this is the game for you. If you think about it, I have made a city with 534 people and it's this big on a map that is truly gargantuan. You can make a mega village empire if you want to just build and have fun. Have I got the map bug back? Wait, why is the, where's the camera going? I've actually reported this to the developers. This is a map bug. It's pretty funny. You just keep zooming out until you restart your PC. It's pretty hilarious. Anyway, now I've got a time limit, I will end up with what I'm trying to say here. So there's a lot of options to play this way. You haven't got to play how I've played. If you want to have a nice 
calm experience, you can. I like war though, so hopefully when the developer makes this game have more updates and roadmaps, they include some stuff with difficulty and just losing the game in some way. Uh, what's next on my channel? I actually have three days until a game called Bellright comes out on the 23rd, and I really want to play it. But at the same time, I'm not going to make random content for no reason for three days. So we're going to just sit around for that. There's going to be no content for the next few days. But on the 23rd, it will start up again. Though I will point out, I haven't got a key for it like Man Lords two weeks before it comes out. So I'm going to be doing the uh, rapid download, rapid play, rapid upload strategy, which is horrifically stressful. And I wish it would be the case, but this is what it is. Apart from that, though, everybody, thank you so much for watching this series. It has been great to actually play a new game and for it to do so well. I did not think I would ever get this far at all with this. I am absolutely blown away by the amount of people that watch this content. So thank you very much. And I hope that you watch my content in the future. If we're playing games that are new and not something I've been doing for years. <laughs> uh, apart from that though, that is the end of this series. And also for now, the end of Man Lords. As we leave the realm and go to a completely different universe on a different planet. I bid you adieu. Thank you for watching. As always, please like, subscribe, and comment below. And I'll see you next time. Bye.